Hello friends. Welcome to Dental Digest Plus. Please subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon, so you can get the notification of the new video. Today's topic is gypsum products. I will try my best to make you understand each and every aspects of this topic. So let's begin. As everyone knows, natural gypsum is in the form of a rock. And these rocks are converted into fine powders. Here you can see different varieties of gypsum rocks. As you can see, alabaster is white in color, and is not transparent. And satin spar over here, is fibrous with a milky white or pink color, and has silky luster. But selenite is colorless and transparent, with a pearl-like shine. These varieties of gypsum rock, are naturally occurring white powdery mineral. And they are mined from the different parts of the world. As you can see in the picture, among all these rocks, mine workers found the gypsum, after that gypsum is cleaned, and ground into fine powder, and after that it goes under the calcination process, to form the gypsum product. Its chemical formula is calcium sulfate dihydrate, and it is the second softest mineral on the Mohs hardness scale. Here you can see, alabaster and selenite. Alabaster is white in color and selenite is transparent. So how to differentiate these gypsum rocks from other similar looking rocks? You can put a scratch marks on the gypsum rocks with the fingernail. And now look at this transparent selenite stone, which looks exactly like a quartz stone. But with quartz stone you can scratch the glass slab. Selenite is soft and it cannot put a scratch mark on the glass slab. Gypsum products are supplied as fine powders. This powder is mixed with water, and it forms a fluid mass. This fluid mass can be poured into an impression. And after that, it hardens into rigid and stable mass. Gypsum products are used for the positive reproductions or replicas of oral structures. These replicas are called casts, models, or dyes and they are obtained from the negative reproduction called an impression. Model is used for treatment planning and for observing treatment progress. And cast is a positive replica, over which different kind of prosthesis, or restorations are fabricated. Whereas dye is a positive reproduction of a prepared tooth, over which, it is easy to fabricate wax pattern of a tooth crown. Remember this. Gypsum is calcium sulfate dihydrate, and, gypsum products are calcium sulfate hemihydrate. Now let's discuss, different forms of calcium sulfate hemihydrate. First is dental plaster, second is dental stone, and third is improved stone. Calcination process. Gypsum products are produced, as a result of heating gypsum, and driving off part of the water of crystallization. This process is called calcination, and it is shown into the equation. Manufacturing Dental Plaster Now let's discuss the manufacturing process of dental plaster. As you can see into the slide, gypsum is heated into an open kettle, at 110 to 120 degrees centigrade, and it is converted into dental plaster. The process is called dry calcination. And dental plaster is also called beta calcium sulfate hemihydrate. Dental plaster crystals are of irregular shape, and they are very porous. As shown into the picture, they have random shape. Remember this type 1 gypsum is impression plaster, and type 2 gypsum is model plaster. Manufacturing dental stone. Now let's discuss the manufacturing process of dental stone. Whenever gypsum is heated into a closed container, under steam pressure at 120 to 130 degrees centigrade, at 17 pound per square inch for 5 to 7 hours, it is converted into the dental stone. This process is called wet calcination. And dental stone is also called, alpha calcium sulfate hemihydrate. As shown into the picture, Dental stone has more uniform shaped crystals, 
Dental stone is more dense than dental plaster, it has more larger crystal and smooth particle. Remember this, type 3 gypsum is dental stone. Manufacturing improved stone. Improved stone. Gypsum is heated into the 30% aqueous solution of calcium chloride solution. Improved stone has more dense cubic shaped, larger crystals. Remember this, type 4 gypsum is dental stone with high strength, and type 5 gypsum is dental stone with high strength and high expansion. In this slide you can compare the crystal of dental plaster, dental stone, and improved stone. Depending on the method of calcination, different forms of hemihydrate can be obtained. Alpha hemihydrate Alpha modified hemihydrate, and Beta hemihydrate The alpha and beta designations are retained, because of tradition and convenience, they are without chemical significance, and their use is solely to indicate the particular morphological appearance of the crystals. The differences between the alpha and beta hemihydrates, are as result of differences in the crystal size, surface area, and degree of lattice perfection. If you have been asked during examination, how many types of gypsum products are there, you can say that, there are five types. Type 1 is impression plaster. Type 2 is dental plaster. Type 3 is dental stone. Type 4 is dental stone with high strength. Type 5 is dental stone with high strength and high expansion. Synthetic gypsum. Synthetic gypsum is made from the byproducts produced during manufacture of phosphoric acid. Synthetic gypsum are more expensive, and are having the same properties, as the products produced by calcination process. Manipulation of gypsum products is relatively simple. It requires mixing bowl, mixing spatula, room temperature water and gypsum product. For obtaining optimum properties, water and powder must be proportioned accurately. For mixing the gypsum product, we need to take the measured amount of water into the mixing bowl first. Followed by gradual addition of the powder into the water. Here for hand mixing, we are using flexible rubber bowl, and stiff bladed spatula. The mix obtained should be smooth, homogeneous and workable in consistency. The mix should also be free of air bubbles. Use of the dental vibrator, will reduce the amount of air bubbles. A uniform, homogeneous, creamy mix with less air incorporation can be obtained, using an automated vacuum mixture. A good mix should have a glossy surface with a smooth and creamy consistency. After this, we can pour the gypsum mixture into the mold. To prevent the entrapment of the air, we will again use dental vibrator. You can see that, bubbles are coming out on the surface of the mixture. The gypsum product should be left undisturbed for 45 to 60 minutes, until the material sets completely. After that, we can remove the cast or model from the mold. Setting Reaction when calcium sulfate hemihydrate is mixed with water, it forms calcium sulfate dihydrate, and heat is generated. The setting reaction is the reverse of the first stage of dehydration, so it is exothermic. This chemical reaction takes place, regardless of whether the gypsum product is used as impression material, or a dye material. During induction period, in initial stage the mix is in sole state, and there is a continuous aqueous phase present. As the setting reaction proceeds, mix becomes thick in consistency, which can be poured into an impression. 
After that mix becomes plastic. It will not flow under vibration. And there is formation of needle-like clusters of gypsum crystals. And finally material sets. The strength increases as well. These are the physical changes observed during setting reaction. Let's talk about theories of setting reaction. Various theories have been put forth for the setting reaction. First is the colloidal theory, second hydration theory, and third crystalline theory. Colloidal theory In colloidal theory, when plaster is mixed with water, plaster enters into the colloidal state through a sole gel mechanism. In the sole state, hemihydrate particles are hydrated to form dihydrate, thereby entering into an active state. As the measured amount of water is consumed, the mass converts into a solid gel. Hydration Theory In hydration theory, the hemihydrate undergoes hydration, and the rehydrated plaster particles join together, through hydrogen bonding, to the sulfate groups, to form the set material. Crystalline Theory Crystallization theory is based on dissolution of plaster and instant recrystallization of gypsum. It is also called as dissolution precipitation theory. It is the most acceptable theory. Here you can see the difference in solubilities between dihydrate and hemihydrate. When the hemihydrate is mixed with water, a suspension is formed that is fluid and workable. The hemihydrate dissolve until it forms a saturated solution. This saturated solution of hemihydrate, is supersaturated, then there will be formation of dihydrate crystals, and after that solution supersaturates with dihydrate, in this supersaturated dihydrate solution, precipitation of dihydrate crystals occurs. Now, as the dihydrate precipitates, the solution is no longer saturated with the hemihydrate, so it continues to dissolve. Dissolution of hemihydrate and precipitation of dihydrate as either new crystals, or there will be further growth on the already present dihydrate crystals, the reaction continues, until no further dihydrate precipitates out of the solution, as the gypsum forming increases, mass hardens into needle-like clusters called spherulites. The intermeshing and entangling of crystals, lead to a strong and solid structure. Water Powder Ratio the proportion of water to powder, used to make a workable mix of a particular gypsum product, is called water powder ratio, the amount of water and hemihydrate should be gauged accurately by weight. Water powder ratio is an important factor in determining the physical and chemical properties of the final gypsum product. For mixing dental plaster in good consistency, 45 to 50 milliliter of water is required for 100 grams of powder. For mixing dental stone in good consistency, 28 to 30 milliliter of water is required for 100 grams of powder. For mixing improved stone in good consistency, 22 to 24 milliliter of water is required for 100 grams of powder. The proper water powder ratio for each products depends on physical characteristics of powder particles. Therefore, irregular and porous dental plaster particles require more amount of measured water. Now let's understand various effects of, low and high water powder ratio on gypsum products. Whenever there is low water powder ratio, mix will be in thick consistency, and this mix will set faster. And also there will be high setting expansion, and compressive strength will be more. Whenever there is high water powder ratio, mix will be in thin consistency, and this mix will set slowly. And also there will be low setting expansion and less compressive strength. Temperature Now let's understand effects of temperature on setting reaction. In this slide you can see that, if there is increase in temperature, first there is increased solubility ratio, which causes increase in setting reaction rate, and decrease in setting time. If temperature decreases, first there is decreased solubility ratio, and after that decreased rate of reaction, and increased setting time. So we can say that if temperature increases, the setting time decreases, meaning the material will set faster. 
If temperature decreases, the setting time increases, meaning the material will set slowly. Second theory says that, there is a change in iron mobility with the temperature change. So as you can see in the slide, increase in temperature is causing decreased setting time, which is just like previous theory. So practically, the effects of these two phenomena are superimposed, and the total effect is observed. So if temperature is high, then material will set faster. Setting time Now let's discuss setting time. When powder is mixed with water, the time that elapses from the beginning of mixing, until the material hardens is known as setting time. So why we need to know the setting time of dental plaster or dental stone, because if we know the setting time, we can use the material at its full strength, and we would know when to take out dental cast from the impression, without it getting distorted. You already know what mixing time is. Here you can see mixing time required for mechanical mixing and for hand spatulation. Working time is a time available to use a workable mix, which is approximately 3 minutes. How to measure setting time Now let's see how this setting time is measured. For measuring initial set, there is loss of gloss test. As setting reaction proceeds, the dihydrate crystals continues to grow, and viscosity of the material increases. As reaction further proceeds, the reaction water is taken up in forming dihydrate crystals, the remaining excess water is drawn into the pores, formed by the growing gypsum crystals, which thrust apart because of the intermeshing. This gives the mix dull and non-glossy appearance, which you can see into the picture. At this stage it is possible to carve away the excess material with a plaster knife. Another method for measuring initial setting time is, initial Gilmore test. The Gilmore needle of a specific dimension is lowered onto the mixed surface. The time passes until needle leaves no impression on the mixed surface, is initial setting time of that material. This is how initial time is measured using Gilmore needle. Vicat needle is also used for measuring final setting time. Final setting time means the material is set completely, there is a completion of setting reaction. The set material looks dry and weightless, due to the loss of water from the pores by evaporation. At this point, material can be separated from the impression without distortion or fracture. Specific dimension of Vicat needle is used on mix surface, until needle no longer penetrates to the bottom of the mix. The elapsed time is called as final setting time, for that particular product. The final setting time by this method is about 15 to 20 minutes. Gilmore test is also used for measuring final setting time, but the needle used is of different dimensions. The time elapsed at which this needle leaves only a barely perceptible mark on the surface, is called the final setting time. The final setting time by this method is about 20 minutes. After about 30 minutes, the set material may be safely used for the intended purpose, as the mix attains 80% of the compressive strength of that attained in one hour. This is considered as ready to use criteria. Now if you look carefully at this graph, it shows how much strength is achieved in about one hour. These dots on the curvature shows mixing time, working time, loss of gloss test for initial setting time, initial Gilmore test for initial setting time, Vicat test for final setting time, final Gilmore test for final setting time and ready to use point. Now we will see different factors which can help you controlling the setting time. If you want your material to set slow, you can use high water powder ratio, which can also decrease the strength, you can use water with low temperature, you can decrease the mixing time, and if you want your material to set faster, you can use low water powder ratio, use water with high temperature up to the certain limit, and increase mixing time. Addition of accelerator and retarders can also affect setting time. Borax is commonly used retarder, and potassium sulfate is commonly used accelerator. Setting Expansion There are two types of setting expansion. Normal setting expansion and hygroscopic setting expansion. Setting expansion which occurs in air, is normal setting expansion. 
and setting expansion that occurs underwater is called as hygroscopic setting expansion. During setting reaction, volume of the dihydrate formed is less than the total volume of the hemihydrate and water. According to this, contraction should occur during setting reaction, but instead of that expansion occurs. In this picture, you can see normal setting expansion in left side, hygroscopic setting expansion to the right side, and expansion versus time curve in the middle. In first phase, you can see the initial mix, in which particle is surrounded by water. In second phase, initial growth of the crystal occurs, you can see the water is consumed in normal setting expansion. In third phase, there will be further growth of the crystals. In fourth phase, because of the intermeshing and entangling of the crystals, expansion occurs. You can see that, in hygroscopic setting expansion, crystals growth takes place freely. In fifth phase, there is a termination of the reaction. You can see in expansion versus time curve that, in hygroscopic expansion, expansion is almost double in magnitude, than normal setting expansion. Please note this, hygroscopic expansion is used in dental investment materials, during casting procedure, to compensate the casting shrinkage. Strength Strength of the set calcium sulfate dihydrate is usually measured in compressive strength. Strength increases rapidly as the material hardens after the initial setting time. However free water content of the set material affect the strength. For this reason there are two types of strengths. One is wet strength and second is dry strength. Strength obtained, when the water in excess of that required for hydration of the hemihydrate, is left in the test specimen, is called wet strength, or, it is also called green strength. Strength obtained when the water in excess has been driven off by drying, is called dry strength. Dry strength may be two or more times higher than the green strength. After final setting time, the set gypsum material appears dry and has maximum strength. Effect of drying is reversible, soaking a dry cast in water reduces its strength to the original level. Caring of the cast Once the setting reaction in the cast is completed, its dimensions remain constant under room temperature and humidity. If stone cast is immersed in running water, its linear dimensions may decrease 0.1% for every 20 minutes of immersion. So cast should not be rinsed under water as they will erode. Storage of the gypsum product at room temperature, produce no significant dimensional change, however if storage temperature is raised to 90 degree to 110 degree centigrade, the shrinkage occurs, as the water of crystallization is removed. This dimensional change is more in dental plaster compared to dental stone. Infection Control It is necessary to disinfect the stone cast, to prevent the cross infection. Disinfectants such as 5% phenyl, or 2% glutaraldehyde can be mixed with water when the cast are poured. Alternatively, cast can be disinfected by immersion, in 1 gem 10 dilution of sodium hypochloride for 30 minutes, or, with a spray of Ida-4. Steam sterilization of cast, or, overnight gas sterilization of cast can also be done.